Where does diversity, equity, and inclusion fit into the curriculum? DEI is not something you can just pick up and buy and just tack onto a syllabus. DEI calls for careful consideration of how to weave the subject matter into the curriculum. And so by incorporating DEI into the curriculum and classroom management, institutions can expect improved outcomes. Westcliff University's College of Business took a hard look at the approach to DEI integration and to launching curriculum champions and made it as a vital component. Adding DEI within curriculum through the curriculum champions process is the focus of today's lesson. Today, you're gonna to hear about the genesis, vision, implementation, and assessment of curriculum champions. Let's set the context and start with a brief explanation of the need we encountered in terms of diverse, equitable, and inclusive practices in the College of Business curriculum. First, the College of Business um, curriculum undergoes continuous assessment and revision to meet the latest trends in higher education, and that includes equity, diversity, and inclusion. So through these revisions, we devised really good opportunities to concentrate on equitable and inclusive practices that were engaging to both our extremely diverse student and, and faculty bodies. We also saw an opportunity to benefit underrepresented students from diverse and inclusive learning uh, environments. And we wanted also to enhance critical thinking, which means higher levels of service to community, avoid educational inequities to guarantee student success. And we also saw the need of a diversity, equity, and inclusion review as a work group, as a teamwork. Um, we wanted to embrace Westcliff University core values throughout all the College of Business uh, programs, and that meant to include integrity, accountability, social responsibility, global citizenship, diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as collaboration and compassion. Equally important, we needed to fulfill the Westcliff University mission to empower students around the world, since we have a quite diverse student body, to the ultimate goal of improving teaching and learning. So we started questioning the curriculum. We started having a hard look at the courses that we offer at the College, uh, College of Business. And we realized that discussion questions were not really conversational. Uh, they were more content-based and the assignments had not much, not much technology. They only had some PowerPoint and Word assignments. We also realized that the assignments lacked peer-to-peer -peer interaction and they, didn't have too much um, teamwork and engagement between classmates. And that's why we realized that we needed to innovate our curriculum. And for that, we just re wanted to provide students with more than just discussion questions, something more engaging, tasks and activities that they felt excited to complete with a wide variety of technology and um, taking into consideration the different cultural backgrounds that we have in our classrooms. And for the assignments, we wanted to encourage interaction, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, feedback and teamwork, and of course, in order to enhance engagement. The Dean of the College of Business had a vision to approach curriculum from a collaborative team approach, bringing together instructional designers, subject matter experts, diversity, equity, and inclusion reviewers, and quality control persons. Curriculum champions work together to advance student achievement by developing assignments, courses, and materials in line with the College of Business teaching philosophy of vitalizing business concepts through a pragmatic and relevant framework. Curriculum Champions is grounded in the Westcliff Capri learning experience philosophy. The Capri model at Westcliff ensures that learning is contextualized, applied, practical, relevant, and inclusive. This philosophy guides curriculum development and learning experiences for our diverse student body in order to address student aspirations for career development and advancement in the modern world. Our courses and programs challenge students to apply concept in their chosen fields of study as a means of enhancing their understanding and expanding their critical thinking. 
Building on over a century of research in how adult students learn effectively, Westcliff University developed the CAPRI model to ensure curriculum and instruction align with the needs of our students to create an optimal learning experience. Implementation of curriculum champions looks a little bit like this. As you'll notice, it's not a linear process. There's much preparation and enhancement, scoring and checking, and finally polishing and launching of a course. In the prep and enhance stage, there are SMEs and instructional designers that work together after the course has been prepared with the course description enhancement, course learning outcomes enhancement, and just general structure of what the course should look like. Many conversations happen between the SME and the instructional designer in this stage. Next is the DEI scoring and final subject matter expert check. As a note, our subject matter experts are our faculty in that area of expertise. The course is compared against a rubric that helps the DEI scorer determine to what extent that course meets DE and I standards. The subject matter expert has the opportunity to do a final check of the course before it goes on to quality assurance, which includes a copy edit, an administrative review by the VPAA, Vice President of Academic Affairs and the Dean, and final formatting before it is placed in our learning management system or GAP. Let's take a closer look at what that looks like. In the preparation stage and uh, enhancement stage, we have the SME and instructional designer again, and much of the DEI integration happens in this stage and again at DEI scoring. So what does that look like in practice? Well, what that looks like is this, diversity of voice, differentiation and individualization, equitable access, practical connection, social justice, and equity. I'm gonna break that down. With diversity of voice, what we were looking at were how to integrate opportunities for students to work together cooperatively or share learning experiences, strengths, backgrounds, interests, through discussion questions, team projects, partner projects, and peer evaluation. For individualization and differentiation, we were looking at providing opportunities for individual learners to express their learning in various ways, accounting for the multiple learning styles. Examples are a variety of assignments to include written papers, live presentations, student-created videos, visual assignments such as mind maps or infographics, research and digital literacy assignments. Here we also introduce new technology, tutorials and links as opposed to flash drives, for example. There are many ways for students to now submit assignments that speak to the needs of this new generation. Equitable access. Here we were considering how to provide course materials in several different ways or formats. For example, articles, readings outside of the textbook, videos, open educational resources, and case studies. For practical connection, we had to consider how to incorporate real life connection and representation from various cultures and life experiences. Examples include peer assignments with peers from other countries, allowing students to their choice in assignments, which allow them to include context from their own countries, career related assignments to connect real life expectations in a professional setting, and more. For social justice, here we were thinking about how to provide avenues for students to connect learning to social, political, or environmental concerns that affect them, their lives, and how to enact change. Examples, where possible, we try to connect assignments to uh, incorporate responsibility, sustainability, business ethics, social media, and other legal considerations. And finally, equity. 
Here we were paying very close attention to minimizing dominant discourse, deficient perspectives, and possible bias or microaggressions in instruction, language, and expectation so that students from non-dominant backgrounds, for example, English language learners, students from poverty, students with special needs, various genders or sexual orientations, that they would all have access and still participate as readily as those from dominant backgrounds. Examples of this were that we were to ensure all course materials are provided in an accessible manner to all students. We had to consider the context of course materials, of assignments, of textbooks. And we used the Universal Design for Learning, or UDL framework, to build the course curriculum. Here we also ensured we decentralized corporate America as the focal point of business course examples and increased entrepreneurial and small business context discussions. After about six months in working in our current team makeup, we, we felt the need to rethink and reassess the way we run our process. Um, it became more clear that, um, that a rethink and a revamp were necessary. Uh, the process itself had grown over time to include more people and more elements um, in, the, in the curriculum design process, running the syllabus from start to finish, uh, from inception to implementation. We were running a process uh, management technology that was more linear in nature, when in reality, as we've mentioned, our process is very nonlinear and quite re uh, iterative. So curriculum champions made a hard stop on curriculum development for a period to reflect and assess. We did so by conducting a 360 set of plus delta meetings where all stakeholders were included and um, able to uh, debrief about their experience and um, the, the things that they would like to see differently and the things that went well. So we were able to celebrate our successes. Uh, we officially uh, enhanced 38 courses in our time together, and that set um, a really good foundation for understanding the process and, and how to, to optimize it. Uh, when conducting the plus deltas with uh, the range of, of stakeholders, a clear pattern emerged of what was and was not working. Uh, there was very little conflict in, uh, in ideas about how to move forward. Um, so we, we developed a set of next steps in Curriculum Champions 2.0. And those next steps include an even greater inclusion and more intentional inclusion of universal design for learning principles. Uh, another area that we felt was very important was further curriculum development training for our subject matter experts so that we could enhance and uh, further, um, like more deeply incorporate them into our curriculum design process. Uh, with that would include um, more collaboration between the instructional designers and the subject matter experts, where these two steps would be um, less individualized, less separate, but more of a collaboration. Um, which <laughs> leads to uh, it just being a less linear process in general and, and just allowing for that, that nonlinear nature to, to kind of come to the forefront instead of just learning to manage it. Uh, and finally, uh, the need for clear role definition and expectations uh, was brought to light um, uh, in, our, in our team and with the the other members of the process that would come and go um, on an ad hoc basis. We thank you so much for attending this session and now we will take your questions. And if you think of any questions after the session has concluded, we encourage you to email us at curriculumchampions at westcliff.edu. Thank you.